Wentworth Clubhouse, Lord Lyle presents the Ryder Cup to Lloyd Mangrum, captain of the American team, which scored a narrow victory over Great Britain in the traditional golf tussle. Henry Cotton, Britain's non-playing captain, looks on as Mangrum modestly holds the trophy, which America has kept for 20 years. A heavy mist blanketed the course on the morning of the last day's play. Britain, beaten 3-1 in the foursomes, faced a tough task. The rival captains discussed prospects. They looked dark from Cotton's point of view, for the Americans needed only four wins from the eight singles to retain the Ryder Cup. Ted Kroll opened the American attack. A happy surprise for Britain was Crowe's defeat by Irishman Fred Daly, who played magnificent cool golf all the way. Ireland turned up trumps again when Harry Bradshaw, here driving onto the second green, gave Fred Hass a run for his money. Fred Hass gets out of trouble. He went down fighting by three and two to Bradshaw. On went the crowd to the 18th. Here's how Max Faulkner fared on his way there. Carey Middlecroft, Faulkner's opponent, tries a long putt on the 18th. Wisecracker Bob Hope, in the audience for a change, watched Faulkner still dogged by gremlins. Faulkner lost three and one to Middlecroft. Hope was high when Eric Brown tried his luck during his duel with Mangrum. Now it was Mangrum's turn. But the American captain finally lost to Brown by two holes. That was Britain's third victory. It looked as if we might pull it off when American Sam Sneed, fighting a do-or-die battle with Harry Wheatman, missed. Wheatman, a 32-year-old professional from Croydon, missed as well. The chunky little Britisher, still ahead, made quite sure of it at his second try and down it went. Sneed was first to congratulate him on his splendid victory. And what a reception Wheatman received, for he'd been five down after 23 holes, but pulled out everything he'd got to turn the tables. After wasting a stroke, 22-year-old Peter Alice made a good chip shot. Alice's opponent, Tonisa, tries a long putt. Then came tragedy for Britain. Alice missed a short one. Peter Alice, heartbroken by his failure, was joined in misery when another British youngster, Bernard Hunt, attempted an easy one. It was all over. Two simple but vital putts had confirmed Britain's defeat. But what a game it had been. Only one point decided the victors from the vanquished. To end a day of great sport, a great sportsman, Henry Cotton, paid tribute to the British players. I really have had a, an exciting afternoon, waiting and watching and hoping, praying a bit here and there. And I'm only sorry that Lloyd Mangum's having such a good time right now. <laughs> I'm still not having a good time. <laughs> Our boys have put on a marvelous show today, and I'm sure, sure all you British people are just as proud of them as I am. Yeah.